In this video, I'm going to finish setting up profile fragments, which is the fragment that you see on the screen here, uh, so that I can display all the information about the authenticated user. So I have the finished version of the app right here running on the screen. Uh, this is what it will look like. It will have their email, I think that's their username and then their their website that they're a part of. That's the information that they're gonna be dis that's gonna be displaying on the screen. And uh, I'm gonna show you a lot of things that you that are very important that you need to know about view models, fragments, and Dagger. There's a couple of nuances. It's not as straightforward as using an activity uh, because fragments have kind of a weird life cycle. They have their own life cycle basically and you can get kind of some weird behavior with observers and dagger and things like that. So I'm going to show you some some really important things that you're not going to want to miss. So the first thing is let's go into our profile view model and we're going to be leveraging our session manager once again. So I'm going to create the, that private final session manager object manager session manager and pass it through the constructor just like we've done before. So session manager, session manager, this dot session manager equals session manager. And uh, now I want to return the session manager, or sorry, the, um, the information about the authenticated user from the session manager. So public live data, this is gonna be an auth resource wrapped in a user object or a user object wrapped around a auth resource, get authenticated user, and then return uh, session manager dot get auth user. So the same kind of thing we've done before. Nothing. There should be nothing new here. Uh, basically, no surprises. But uh, there might be something that's bugging you about this. I'm suspect. I'm suspecting that some of you uh, will have a question about this. And let me kind of outline the question that I think you're going to have. So in profile fragments, I know uh, obviously you understand that our goal here is going to be to observe the authenticated user in profile fragment, just like we've done in the activities. Uh, now you might be thinking, but Mitch, why, why, why wouldn't you just do this? Why wouldn't you just do main activity, uh, get activity, get the session manager, and then get the authenticated user and do get value? Because doing that, I could get the uh, I could get the auth resource object wrapped in the user. I could just say user equals that, and then it's done. Then I have that reference to the user, and I could set the widgets. Uh, I suspect some of you are wondering why I haven't done that. And the reason is because it breaks the MVVM architecture. Uh, the whole point of using MVVM is to observe the data and to make the data lifecycle aware. So it's basically immune to uh, configuration changes or any other small things. Like this, for example, is not a good idea because every time the view is created, it's gonna get, it's gonna retrieve that data again and again. And if for some reason the value isn't there, it will throw a null pointer and you'll get a crash. So there's a, there's a lot of problems with this. Uh, basically, a good rule of thumb is don't break the MVVM architecture and always try to observe things, never just extract the values, even though they're there and it might be uh, tempting just to get them. So on that note, now I'll show you the proper way, which uh, you might have thought to do right away. But anyway, so private void, I'm going to write a subscribe observers method, just like we've done before. Observers. I forgot a V. I forgot a V. Observers. I spelled that very wrong. Uh, so inside here, uh, the first thing I want to do is do view model get authenticated user and actually call a method called named remove observers and call get view lifecycle owner. Uh, so some of you have probably never seen this before. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just attach the observer first of all, and then we're going to come back and talk about that. So get authenticated user dot observe. I want to reference the lifecycle owner. So get view lifecycle owner and then uh, do new observer. So why did I do that? You know, in an activity, I would just pass this right here and I wouldn't have to reference the, the lifecycle owner or the view lifecycle owner. And I definitely didn't remove the observers. So why am I doing this inside of a fragment? Why, why is this different than an activity? So as I said at the beginning of the video, fragments have their own life cycle. They can be destroyed and recreated at the discretion of the Android system. So for, for these reasons, we need to make sure that we remove the previous observers before assigning new ones. The get view lifecycle owner method is actually fairly new. It was created recently because of this exact issue. So it's, a, it's an answer from the Android team from Google um, answering and solving a problem that fragments had with view models um, and subscribing and all that kind of thing. So it's very important that you do this. 
Uh, otherwise, you can get kind of weird behavior, observers left floating around in memory. Not, not a good situation, basically. So now let's uh, move forward here. I'm going to write a switch statement just like we've done before. Right, if the uh, user auth object is not equal to null, uh, and then I want to add a few cases. Now I actually only need two cases. I'm going to, oh, I need to switch the status, whoops. Oh, what am I doing? I needed to check, oh, I messed this all up. Uh, not switch yet, first I need to check if it's null. So checking if this is not null, and then we want to add a switch statement. I'm starting to lose my mind. I've been fil filming all day. Uh, so now the switch statement, I want to do user auth, auth user auth resource dot status. That's what we're switching. Uh, now I only want to add two cases. We only actually need two cases in here because uh, in the fragment, there's not a lot of things that could potentially be happening. The only two cases that I want are authenticated and error. So if there's a problem, so if there is a problem. So if they're authenticated, that means that the data was successfully observed from the session manager. And in that case, we just want to basically set the set the user details. So I could go set user details. I haven't made this method yet, obviously. Uh, user auth resource dot data. So that's where we're going to set the details. And then if there's an error, I want to do set error details and do the same thing. So auth resource, but I want to reference that message that's going to be attached to the auth resource class. Before I make these methods, we need widgets to actually set things to. So I'm coming up to the top and I'm going to add three new widgets to the screen. Uh, they're going to be text views. So private text view, email, username, and website. I'm going to attach those to their IDs in the onCreateView method. So email equals view, find view by ID, r.id.email. And then we have the uh, username, so same thing, find view by ID, r.id.username. Oops, user, username, uh, website, last one, view, find view by ID, .id dot website. So those are the three widgets for the screen. And now I can build these methods. So I'm clicking Alt Enter, create method, uh, create an anonymous method. Oops, no, not there. I want to create, I want to create the method inside the class. So inside profile fragment. And I'll also create this method. So Alt insert one more time after I get rid of that red box. Alt insert one more time and add that one. Uh, this is going to accept a string message. Yes. All right. So now let's build these methods. Since my cursor is already in the error method, I'm going to write email, uh, set text to that message. Uh, just do username, set text to error. And then the same thing with the email. So I'm just going to, or sorry, the website. Now for the user details, this is where we actually set the details for the user. So email set text, it's going to be user, whoops, it'll be data get email. And you do that two more times, one for the username, one for the website. This is obviously get username and then this is get website. And that uh, that should be pretty much it. So what's uh, so what's happening? Let's just quickly review. So we have our profile view model where we are leveraging our session manager to get access to the authenticated user's information. We're returning live data from the session manager and observing that inside of the fragment. So nothing really is new. We've done this before. We've done this in the activities. The only thing that's different is this lifecycle owner thing. So we need to make sure we, we remove observers because fragments have their own agenda, their own life cycle. They basically do what they want. They, they uh, well, they do what the Android system wants them to do. So if the Android system's like, hey, fragment, be destroyed, see you later. But they, uh, they don't remove the observers, you can get issues. That's why you want to always call get view lifecycle owner to attach the observers to the lifecycle owner. So now let's run this and see if we're getting that information in the profile fragment. All right, so there's the app on the screen. Let's log in with an ID. There it is logging in. And there is that user's information. I can log out and try a different user just to make sure. Press number nine. And there's that user's information. So I did notice one thing that main activity toast is popping up that shouldn't be there. I think in main, yeah, that's what we have that main activity. I'm just going to delete that. And uh, other than that, everything is performing exactly as we expect. Uh, you know, we have our view model set up. We're leveraging our session manager once again. Uh, everything is coming together and it's looking really cool. And I hope you can see the power of using a class like the session manager. So it's going to exist for as long as the application is alive and you can hold uh, information in there 
about uh, application level dependencies like an authenticated user. So really cool stuff. I hope uh, you've learned something. Now in the next video, let me just uh, run the finished version of the app here. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna start working on the other fragment. So if I log in with an ID and I go to the navigation drawer, I'm gonna start working on posts fragment. So what this is, is it, it's a bunch of posts that are unique to a particular user from the API. Uh, but basically what it is, is it's just another fragment. We're gonna have another view model and it's gonna be returning some different data, gonna have a different API call. Uh, so you're gonna get to see some different modules and different uses of Dagger. So uh, I'll see you in the next video. I uh, just wanted to kind of interject here. This is breaking the regular course flow for this course in this video. I just wanted to kind of quickly interject and ask you a favor. So for those of you who don't know, I make my living from making courses. I make online content and I have a membership on my website where I have premium courses available to my members. And uh, since I stopped making courses for Pluralsight, that's pretty much, much exclusively how I make my living. So that's how I literally pay my rent and I buy food and I it keep existing. Um, so I wanted to just kind of take a second and ask you, if you get any value from my courses, to please go to my website, konukmich.com, and leave a testimonial. So just go to more, go to testimonials. Uh, if you if you want to leave a testimonial, all you got to do is create an account. It's free. It takes literally 30 seconds to do. And click on write a testimonial right here. And uh, this will pop up. You can leave a comment here saying, you know, like, Mitch helped me get a job or whatever. Uh, leave a rating. My mic is falling down. Um, leave a rating and submit that. And that, uh, that would really help me. It helps me to everybody who writes a testimonial uh, is, is another piece of proof that my stuff works and my videos work and you get jobs and you get better at being a developer. You build the app that you always wanted to build. All of these things. So if, uh, you know, if you get any value from my courses, from my, from my videos, I would appreciate a testimonial. Thanks. Let's get back to the course.